Hey, 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 gorgeous people. Welcome to my channel. I get asked this question, either on Instagram or my YouTube channel. What do you do, Kes, when a service user becomes physically violent or abuses or insults you? Or should I say rains insults at you? What do you do when a family member asks you to crush a client's medication into the food when it is not written that way in their care plan? I will be answering all this and more. So stay tuned and I'll be answering your questions. My name is Kessiana Aquara Ati, a health and social care trainer. To all you old and new returning subscribers who keep coming back to watch, like my videos. Oh my God, you guys are amazing. And guess what? We have been officially monetized. Yay! Let's go, 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 let's go. Yep, you guys did it. You made it happen. And of course, I must thank God Almighty for preserving our lives and keeping us to see this day. And to you, my wonderful subscribers, both old and new, who made this happen, who made the monetization happen. You guys are, you rock. Thank you so much. Hi. And if you're just watching this channel for the first time, hello, what are you waiting for? Smash the subscribe button. Yeah. And click on the like button. Give me a thumbs up. And don't forget hit that notification bell so whenever i upload a new video you will be among the first to know okay follow me on instagram care by cares tiktok care by cares and twitter care by cares as well and i will most definitely as always see you there so come on people we're going we're going places thank you for believing in me Thank you for your flinching support. Thank you for your mind-blowing support and encouragement. Trust me, it is honestly and truly appreciated. And believe me when I say we are going somewhere. This is a movement. We are going somewhere to happen. We are so going to make doing the right things in care fashionable. That those who do the wrong things will become unfashionable. You get what I mean? All right. So let's get down to today's topic. And what are we talking about today? As the title implies... On a UK tattoo visa, your questions, my answers. Like I said in the, at the in intro, I get asked these questions all the time. And I decided to make a video to address these questions once and for all. Instead of answering it individually to my subscribers. You, my awesome subscribers. Okay? So let's get to it. Now, I get asked this question. What do you do when a client becomes physically violent? Or they begin to rain abuses at you. Now, there's something you must realize, particularly those that have mental illness or learning disability. When they get physically aggressive, violent, and all of that, do yourself a favor. Leave their environment. Do not stand and try to defend yourself or do anything. If you have been trained in the, with giving the MAPA training, rather, you, you have, but there are times where you can use it and there are times where you cannot use it. But my sincere um, suggestion and advice is that when they get physically aggressive, please walk out of the room. That way you will de-escalate the situation. But if you stand and get confrontation and they hit you and they hurt you, people, there is no compensation. So keep yourself safe. I have heard of a, a client who tried to hurt a lady one time. It was just two of them in the house. The lady ran into the conservatory and locked the door to the next morning. Because if the client hit her, there will be no compensation because you know exactly what you are working with. Because if he hits them back and they get injured, trust me, you're going to jail. I am sorry, but that is the truth. All right? Now, if they bring insults at you, just walk away. Don't stand and start trading insults back and forth like that. No, it is not acceptable. Hope that makes sense. Now, if a service user's a relative who lives with them in the same house tells you, oh, why don't you just crush the medication into their food? Blah, 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 blah. Hello, for your own safety. Tell them that as long as it's not stated that way in the care plan, you will not be a part of it. Does that make sense? Now, that is called covert medication. It is an abuse. 
Now, when I do medication, which I hope to do very soon, I will be explaining further what that means. Now, the reason why people take tablets, for my own little knowledge, is because it's supposed to enable the tablet to dissolve slowly into the bloodstream. When you crush it, what happens? It goes straight into the bloodstream. There could be adverse effects. And that is you, the carer, who has done that going to jail. If they tell you, oh, you could just do it, blah, 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 blah. Hello, tell them to do it themselves. You are not be, you will not be a part of it. And when you write it in your, particularly those of you in the domiciliary um, sector, when you write it in your um, notes, these days you use that pass, body, or modizio, mobizio, you write it there. Um, relative asked me to do, 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 blah, blah, blah. And your reply, state it there. So that when they come back to say, you did it, hello, you've got your proof. Because on this job, you must have proper documentation. It can save you when you least expect it. Okay? Now, I have been asked, also, can a man give a woman personal care? Yes, unfortunately. <laughs> and a woman can also give a man personal care. In the dumb sector, in the domiciliary, um, domiciliary sector or the care home, nursing home sector, yes, it does happen. I have given men personal care. So, it doesn't matter. Now, Another question has been, if your client um, become, makes um, sexual advances towards you, what do you do? Hmm, good question. Now, so you know, you are not supposed to have any amorous, you know what I mean, relationship with your clients. It is an abuse. And you could go to jail for it. You are supposed to be the carer. You are supposed to be the professional. So what on earth are you doing having a relationship with the clients? If they make sexual advances towards a really that lives with them, makes sexual advances towards you, just be calm. Do not get angry. Do not have any emotions on your face. Just be calm and say to them, I am sorry. My job description does not include that. I will appreciate it if you stop making those advances at me or I will report you. And again, when you fill in your notes, put it on there. So and so made sexual advances towards me and I told him I was going to report it. And please, report. Do not say, oh, he just... Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Because if you keep quiet and somebody goes there and he does the same thing, you will be asked, why didn't you say what he did it to you? So it will be assumed that you also, you, you, um, you gave in and you had that relationship with him. Trust me, but you go to jail, you lose your license, and you could be banned from working in care for the rest of your life. This job is enjoyable, but it has boundaries that you must not cross as a professional. All right? Now, I've also been asked the question, what do you do if you're a living carer? Or let me rephrase that. If you're a living carer, of course, living with somebody in the house, day in, day out, week in, week out, and all of that. Yes, you do become close. I get it. But there's a boundary. You are not to... Um, get them into your you cannot you, oh, no, no, let me rephrase that you are not to tell them your personal problems you're not to say to them oh um i have this problem blah 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 mm -mm. and it is all tied down to you asking them indirectly for money it is not allowed financial abuse and it's called subtle cohesion it will be as soon as you use your position as their care to subtly ask them for money extort them for money Please keep your personal business personal. That is my sincere advice. Keep your personal business personal. If they say, oh, how about you? You have children? Yes, I have. I have three. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, what? Oh, change the topic. Bring it back to them. Because when they have mental capacity and people, come, the social worker comes to them and they ask, oh, your carer. I say, oh, my carer told me he has some so problem, financial problem, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> the next time they see you, the police may be with them. So please, I beg of you, by the way you're coming from outside the country, keep your personal business personal. And also have been asked, can you ask your client for money to do something you pay them back? No borrowing of money. You are not there to borrow money from them and pay back. You are there to look after them. So please, do not abuse that trust. Do not abuse it at all. Because, trust me, just as they welcomed you in, you can be kicked out. The police could come knocking. And you don't need all that. As far as I'm concerned, it's just stress that you don't need. Does that make sense? I've also been asked, uh, what is the age limit for 
being a carer, to apply for the job as being a carer. <laughs> Surprisingly, there's no limit. And guess what, people? Guess who walked into my training session today? An amazing 71-year-old woman. My God. And man, she looked damn good. No wrinkles, fresh. Hi, babe. I mean, I want to be like that when I grow up. She was looking good. I was like, are you sure you're 71? And she said, yes. I mean, she looked good. No wrinkles. In fact, it looked fresher than mine. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing to look so good? So it is all up to you. You are as old as you feel. If you feel old, then you are old. But if you're young, you can conquer mountains and subdue giants, then you are good to go. Does that make sense? Now, I've also been asked, um, what do healthcare assistants in the NHS do? Well, it's similar to what we do. You have band two, you have band three. Now, if you are band two, basically what you do is personal care, companionship and all of that and feeding and all of that. Now, if you do uh, band three, then you do more, you know, things, things such as uh, taking their blood pressure, you know, carrying out tests, dressing wounds. Of course, you'll be trained to do all those things. Does that make sense? I have also been asked, can I apply for a carer's, for the job of a carer without any medical ex experience? Definitely you can. But you see, to be honest, you could get it. But like I said, to be honest, it is a, a keenly contested, you know, sector at the moment. Everybody is coming in. People who have medical experience, nurses, uh, auxiliary nurses, everybody is coming in. So the more experienced you are, the better your chances. But at the same time, luck would smile on you. If you're lucky, without any medical experience, you will get the uh, job. Like we've seen on YouTube, people say they don't have any medical background whatsoever, but they landed the job. Yes, it is possible. But like I said, it's a keenly contested sector at the moment. So the more experience, even if you're just volunteering, go somewhere and volunteer. It makes a lot and it all adds up. All right. Now, I hope I've answered majority of your questions and I hopefully we should have more questions coming in and I will have a part two of this. So until I see you next time, don't you forget that no matter what the matter is, you matter so much more. Au revoir.